Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Bootleg Brethren. I'm your captain and today we will be taking a look at the Bootleg Mega Constructs Transformers Grimlock. And I've got to say, I actually was surprised by this figure. It was decently well put and I thought it was going to be absolute trash for the fact that, well, I got this one on my own with my own money for like 12 bucks and hey, he's actually not bad. So I would have to say that with my utmost accuracy, the painting and sculpting on this is actually pretty decent. I actually love all these special parts and whatnot, even though it's being a bootleg thing. Really, however, the painting is mainly localized to this headpiece and to this torso plate. And these little decals on his shins here are all mainly just paints, except for this part here and this part here, which is indeed stickers. But other than that, it's really not that bad. I mean, of course, to be practical about this, I would like to say that I love the absolute colors, even though it's based off of the Grimlock toys of old. Of course, we got the lovely gray pieces. Everything fits nice and snug. So this thing is actually really solid. You can throw him against the table and he won't break apart. Although kind of standing him up with his backpack dinosaur head crutch piece kind of is a little bit annoying but overall he's overall he's not really that bad of a character i mean he works really well i mean of course all the pieces fit nice and tight all of the joints are actually really good and he's got a good range of posability well let's just go through that shall we of course we've got some kind of a rotation at the head, but the head doesn't really want to rotate with the helmet, so the helmet just kind of rotates freely. We got a rotation at the shoulder. It's actually just a ball joint that's fairly limited, so you can get some up and down, and if you do it this way, you get some side to side movement. You get a ball joint here at the elbow, a bend at the elbow, you can bend back that far, but that's mainly for the transformation. And also we get a hinge joint here at the claw, at his hand, same thing for the other side. Down here we have kind of a waist swivel, but really this head kind of gets in the way, so if you pinch that back, now you kind of got an okay swivel, but this backpack kind of gets in the way. Of course, over on his back, we've got this hinge joint here, a uh, swivel here, we got a hinge joint here, hinge joint here, hinge joint here, and basically all of this backpack is just hinge joints and swivels. Over here, we got a ball joint at the leg, can kick that far and go back that far, Gymnastic spread here. We've got a bend at the knee. We've got this knee flap that can bend forward on a hinge joint. Toe is... And then we get to the actual problem of the figure where that if you were to play with this a little too hard, this whole section comes off. It's not a feature, it's just annoying. However, it is easy to just put that all back together. And then once you've done that and pinch this nice and tight, you get a hinge joint at the foot. So you just can kind of no bend at the ankle, but still that's understandable for the fact. Still understandable for the fact that this is indeed a bootleg toy figure. But overall, it's actually not that bad. And of course, this figure actually comes with a accessory. Yes, the sword, however, is made out of this lovely orangish red translucent plastic that kind of clips onto this large uh, pole here and this rod can gently clip into his little claw hand and it looks really good but enough of all that how about we get into some size comparisons of this dude we have a pen burning godzilla statue and the Bootleg Mega Constructs. No, I should not show that off yet. Oh, this guy is absolutely beautiful to look at. But then how about we get to the transformation? Now for this video, I want to try something different because if you own this toy and you forgot the instructions, which is absolutely impossible, it's pretty easy to follow through. So if you have this toy, but it doesn't come with the instructions, then go ahead and watch this video. First step, remove the sword. You can push the sword down like so and leave it off to the side. Grab the figure. Go to the arm. Rotate the whole arm around and then hinge out the claw. Do the exact same on the other arm. 
This will become the legs of the dinosaur mode. Take this helmet and gently, if you haven't already screwed this up, gently rotate, uh, I'll just fix that. You can take it off and put it down, but I choose to try to rotate it all the way back so his face is covered. Then, speaking of the back, hinge all this up and then fold it forward. Hinge these pieces in so they rest on the helmet. Fold these arms up and then fold the head down. Fold the hinge joint here up like so and open the mouth. Bend these legs out a little bit and go to the legs of the robot. Push the legs together. Bend them at the knee and bend the whole pair up. So they reach towards the back. Take his feet and rotate them till they reach the back. Fiddle with the fine details until it looks appropriate. Then go to his tail and flip out those knee pads. Feel free to bend these, set them down like so. And the dinosaur mode is okay. Yes, of course it is Kibble City, but really, what's the point? I mean, I like the fact that the Autobot's logo is on his crotch in the dinosaur mode, but this dinosaur mode is actually still really solid. You can throw it against the table and it will look pretty okay. I mean, what you could do is try to get, please remember, this is basically bootleg Lego. It comes apart really easy and also goes back together relatively difficult. But if you were to try, you could probably, let me see, this might be the first time I've done it, pull off a Tyrannosaurus standing mode. And I gotta say, it actually looks pretty good, except for the neck. Ugh. And the whole figure likes to kind of fall over. So maybe if I did that, put that down. Yeah, you get it. But overall, the figure is actually pretty good at this. And it looks great. The painting and the sculpting from the robot mode kind of just comes back in here for round two of the whole painting and sculpting round of this. But overall, I mean, I like it. I like how the eye is actually one one by two red tile brick, which is actually just back here. And I guess if you were to get a flashlight, you could have some light piping. Yeah, I guess that kind of counts. That's actually pretty good. The fact that they gave this all together is actually pretty good. However, the robot mode has no light piping whatsoever. I mean, this is actually pretty good, but the posability is relatively simple for this guy. We got a hinge joint at the head, no rotation, just a hinge joint, and a hinge joint at the jaw. You can actually get him to open his jaw and roar. We have a rotation here at the shoulder. We have a wrist swivel, same thing on the other side. Down here at the legs, we have the all of the posability from the arms just reversed and at the tail you just get a couple hinge joints that go up and down and other than that that's pretty much it for this the accessory from the instructions on how to build the dude just forget it you don't really need it i mean what you could do is just take it and stick it in his dinosaur hand to just kind of not lose it or if you really wanted to do a stretch Attach that to there, and it kind of looks like a Godzilla dorsal spine that I'm stretching for something right now. But really, this toy actually does really good. It's so satisfyingly chunky. The weight is actually pretty good, even though most of it's plastic. Actually, all of it's plastic. Not a single thing in here is die-cast metal. But overall, the fact that they gave you a bunch of these beautiful pieces... Of course, LEGO might sue me and sue the creators of this, but... If they did, they would no longer be able to make any of these cool stuff. Once again, size comparisons. We have the pen, the Godzilla pop figurine, and we've got the bootleg transformers. I'm not gonna show that. Ah, oh, no! Every single time I try to do this video, this cat comes over and starts ruining my setup. This is really annoying. Ugh. But overall, if you're a fan of Transformers and a fan of Lego, you should pick the, uh, these guys up. Uh. If you're a fan of Lego and you're a fan of Transformers, you're probably going to like this guy. You could probably find him on Amazon, but I found him at the Dollar General. And other than that, really, he's just nice. It's a good toy. So all those parents that want to get a really good toy for their kid, but also find it for a fairly cheap or decent price, you might as well pick this guy up. He's not that bad.
And of course, even the kibble is completely understandable. Building the Lego Transformer is not easy. Of course, I've done it, but still. What just... <sighs> but if you like this guy, go ahead, tell me in the comments if you actually have this guy. Tell me how your experience have been with him. And of course, I'll see you all in the next episode of the Bootleg Brethren. Goodbye! Yes, Megatron! <laughs> oh my god.